This is Jeremy Tesmer with SGTV. Time flies. It has been just over 52 years since Leon Dabo passed away at the age of 96. And it has been just over 12 months since my colleagues Nathan Bonk and Frank Goss packed up his life's work outside Manhattan and drove it out to California. On November 1st, 2012, just a few days before the anniversary of the artist's passing, Sullivan Goss mounted its first mini retrospective of the art of Leon Dabo. The gallery put up beautiful examples from every period of the artist's life. Tonalist pictures from the artist's rise to fame between 1900 and 1918, symbolist floral pastels from Dabo's infatuation with the medium made between 1915 and 1925, symbolist flowers and oil, and post-impressionist landscapes from Dabo's second period of high productivity and success from 1930 to 1940. Dark, passionate paintings of the artist's reaction to the horrors of World War II, and Dabo's final triumphant return to color in landscapes of Provence, Canada, and elsewhere. Further exhibitions will certainly follow. Each of these bodies of work deserves its own exhibition, and we mean to make sure they get it. In the meantime, though, we invite you to come in and see a carefully curated selection of works that trace the path pioneered by one creative soul across the brio of the first half of the 20th century. The gallery has already published two books of the artist's work and will likely publish another next year. These books chronicle the career of a highly successful ecclesiastical decorator who yearned to tell the story of his own convictions with his own images. Those images? soft, abstracted, idealized landscapes of the Hudson River and its surrounding hills and valleys. They were hugely successful and landed his work in the collections of the Metropolitan, the National Gallery, the Louvre, the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, the Art Institute of Chicago, and many others. His success engendered the respect of his peers, too. If there was an important exhibition in New York at the time, he was likely part of it the Armory Show, the Exhibition of Independence. Dabo served in World War I and returned home to find an art market that had changed a great deal. Undaunted, he went about lecturing about art history with new lantern slides throughout the 1920s before breaking back onto the scene in the 1930s with his florals and landscapes. It was a time in which he showed some of the best galleries in New York and Paris but his career was hijacked a second time by war with the Nazi invasion of Paris in July of 1940. An artist who had always cultivated sensitivity was deeply moved, mounting a special exhibition to help the Allied war effort. His final move towards color in the 50s was recognized by just one really significant exhibition and has yet to be fully appraised. With a bit of distance, we can now make sense of his journey it is a journey at once beautiful, inspiring, and thoroughly thought-provoking. His work will be on view through the end of December. Come see it.